Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazici University. In this video, we will be covering the sixth and the final part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on the graphene antennas and their key advantages over their metallic counterparts. A radio frequency antenna is a form of tuned circuit consisting of inductance and capacitance. Consequently, it has a resonance frequency, which is also called the radiation frequency of that antenna. This is the frequency where the capacitive and inductive reactances cancel each other out. At this point, the radio frequency antenna appears purely resistive, the resistance being a combination of the loss resistance and the radiation resistance. The capacitance and inductance of a radio frequency antenna are determined by its physical properties and the environment where it is located. The major feature of the radio frequency antenna design is its dimensions. It is found that the larger the antenna, or more strictly the antenna elements, the lower the resonant frequency, or radiation frequency. Some examples are given as below. The UHF terrestrial television, the VHF broadcast and FM band, and shortwave applications. Regarding the radiation frequency, in classical metallic antennas, the size of a two dipolar metallic antenna to transmit or receive in a given frequency band should be lambda over 2. Some examples are given with the very high frequency and ultra high frequency. As we mentioned in the earlier videos, our main motivation to downscale the antennas is the fact that in applications like wireless network on chip, we do not have a lot of physical space available to put bigger antennas. Downscaling a classical metallic antenna from millimeter to a few micrometer is not possible. As the radiation frequency increases, the electromagnetic waves they generate enter the optical regime. When the electromagnetic waves enter the optical regime, they are usually governed by the optics physics. As you see in this figure, the radiation frequency increases proportional with the reduced size of the antenna. Graphene antennas, or graphennas for short, are composed of a pure graphene patch over a dialectic substrate. For these antennas, the radiation frequency does not increase that much as the size of the antenna decreases. This is the main advantage of using graphennas over metallic antennas. Surface plasmon polarizations are electromagnetic excitations propagating at the interface between a dielectric and a conductor, evanescently confined in the perpendicular direction. These electromagnetic surface waves arise via the coupling of the electromagnetic fields to oscillations of the conductor's electron plasma. Surface plasmons, not the SPPs, just the SP, the, the, the first part, occur as light-induced packets of electrical charges collectively oscillate at the surfaces of metals at optical frequencies. Under specific conditions, the light that radiates the object, which means the incident light, couples with the surface plasmons to create self-sustaining propagating electromagnetic waves also known as the surface plasmon polarizations. Once launched, these SPP waves ripple along the metallic dielectric interface and do not stray from this narrow path. Compared with the incident light that triggering the transformation, the SPPs can be much shorter in wavelength. In other words, when SPs coupled with a proton, the resulting hybridized excitation is called an SPP. This SPP can propagate along the surface of a metal until energy is lost, either by absorption in the metal or radiation into free space. The fact that graphene exhibits the propagation of SPP waves increases its conductivity much higher than the metallic antennas. 
graphenas resonate at a lower frequency than their metallic counterparts. In metallic antennas, the resonance frequency, or radiation frequency, increases inversely with the size of the antenna. On the other hand, in graphenas, this frequency increases inversely with the square root of the size of the antenna. Consequently, graphenas with a size of a few micrometers resonate in the terahertz band one to two orders of magnitude lower than the metallic antennas. Another notable strong aspect of the graphenas or the metallic antennas is the fact that to have an electromagnetic wave covering the same distance, graphenas require less power than metallic antennas as their size is scaled down. As you can see from the figure, the transmitted power requirement of graphenas are one order lower than the metallic antennas for an antenna with a size of one centimeter. Radiation frequency of graphenas can be tuned by changing the electrostatic bias or the chemical potential on the fly, which means you can change this frequency while the antenna is in operation. This allows unprecedented flexibility for designing the communication systems based on these antennas. Here you can see the chemical potential of a given graphene patch. To summarize, graphenas represent the enabling technology of miniaturized wireless communications among micro and nano systems. They can be up to two orders of magnitude smaller than metallic antennas. Also, they radiate in the terahertz band between 0.1 terahertz to 10 terahertz. Therefore, they offer potentially ultra high data rates in the range of terabits per second. Their transmission range is usually one millimeter and based on the application and the medium and the modulation, it can go as much as up to one meter. Also, they offer large tunability capabilities, which leads to unprecedented design flexibility for antennas. So, we have finished explaining the details of the graphene antennas in the context of nanonetworking and molecular communication. This video concludes the basic level of nanonetworking and molecular communication module of the Colibri project. Here you can see the references of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.